<laughs> Hello. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Lottie and Albert podcast. My name is Lindsay, I'm a crochet designer and editor from the Cotswolds in the UK and this is my vlog all about crochet. I'm going to be talking about finished objects, works in progress, new things. I've also got a book giveaway coming up at the end for Mandy from Crochet by Red Egg Pays new book. So stay tuned if you're interested in winning that and a bundle of yarn. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to be gen generally catching you all up because I have not podcast in quite a while. Uh, it's not really, it wasn't like an intentional thing and um, it just kind of happened, it just kind of happened. I had been all, as ever, busy and just had a lot on and we'd had a holiday, I had several commissions and a few people commented on the last episode basically saying how I always... Uh, talk about how busy I am and that I sound like I have too much on my plate and that was pretty much true and something had to give and I just decided to have a little break and not put any pressure on myself and just do projects that I wanted to do or finish the commissions that I had to do um, and so unfortunately podcasting fell into that bracket and I just didn't feel that I had the energy and I felt like I was podcasting and then not having a chance to reply to people's comments or something, which isn't really the point or the reason that I started this podcast and wanted to talk to you all about crochet. So, uh, yeah, that's where I've been. I've been here. I've been really busy. I have no less than like two bags, two cushions, a rug and a wall hanging from finished objects to show you. Um, so I haven't been resting on my laurels, but... I just haven't been podcasting. Um, so if you're watching for the first time, sorry about the waffle, uh, you're very welcome here. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, then thank you so much for coming back and watching. Um, as I said, I'm Lottie and Albert everywhere across the internet. I'm most active on Instagram. There is also a Ravelry group for this podcast if you want to go and check that out over on the groups tabs on Ravelry. <laughs> So yeah, how has everybody been? It's actually, I think, been about two months since I last podcast. Although I did upload a podcast um, after I got back from holiday. I actually recorded it before I went on holiday. And I went on holiday in the first week of June. So it's been quite a while. I have lots to show you. So as I said, I have got that giveaway coming up at the end. I'm going to kick off now with finished objects and show you a few of the things that I have in finishing in that time. Uh, first up, I wanted to show you this bag that I um, did for Knitcraft. I think I put pictures in the last episode, um, but I didn't have the finished bag to show you because it had gone for a little, a little photo shoot with Hobbycraft. Um, if you're watching for the first time, you may not know I am um, a Knitcraft ambassador for Hobbycraft, so I get to sample new yarn ranges and I also put together free patterns uh, for their blog, which go on my blog too. So this was my free pattern for May, um, possibly June. Let's say June. This is my free pattern for June and it is a cotton basket bag. I wanted to just see if I could do something a bit more structured and I know there are loads of market. <laughs> swinging it around. I know there are loads of market bag patterns around at the moment but I wanted to do more of a basket bag shape um, and I feel like I've, I have achieved what I wanted to achieve. These handles um, are from Hobbycraft. This yarn is the WI Cotton. It's an iron weight yarn that I've held double and it's in the cream colourway. And then these pom-poms are just random yarns that I had um, in my stash, um, which, yeah, just some fun 
kind of, I don't suppose like Mexicana inspired colours for summer. Uh, it's got a panel in it that um, allows you to put a strip of cardboard or plastic, whatever is your preference, whatever ma sturdy material you may have, to give it its um, kind of structure, which is not something I've done before from a pattern, so it was a bit of an experiment, and yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. If you fancy making one of these, the pattern is on my blog uh, for free, and it's just called... Um, basket bag catchy title uh it's also on the hobby craft blog if you want to check it out there i will link i'll put links to everything i'm talking about in the drop down description box below so if you see anything or i talk about something too fast then at the end you can check down there and follow through to the links for everything so that is my first finished object my second finished object you may be able to see I'm looking, going in the wrong direction. Uh, it's also a bag. This is my clutch bag that I was working on and I showed you last time. Um, it is tapestry crochet for the main part. I worked in sort of one long flat strip. And then um, this section is loop stitch. And as you can see, it is leopard print. Continuing my leopard print obsession and loop stitch obsession um i love this texture i think it's really fun my mum says it grosses her out and she thinks it's horrible <laughs> thanks mum she's also told me she doesn't watch my podcast so pretty supportive <laughs> no she is she's super supportive and she's the reason that i got into crafts in the first place but apparently she's not a fan of the loop stitch so i know this might be a bit of a marmite make but yeah, I just, I thought it was really fun, um, and I'm really enjoying it. I took him for a little outing yesterday, my husband and I went on a date night, and yeah, I took him for a little outing. So, I'm hoping to write up the pattern for this, I haven't yet, if anybody wants to make one, um, I will be doing the pattern. And this uses a mix of yarns, really, these are all Aran weight, this is a Debbie Bliss sort of tweedy yarn. And these two are both um, Leader of the Pack by Knitcraft. The only thing that slightly annoys me is where I've got my pattern repeat. Um, these spots, <laughs> these three spots are the same as three, these three spots. Which is fine, but it doesn't either match up or like sit above. It kind of sits on top and makes them look really elongated. So I might try and tweak that in the chart for the final pattern when I do the pattern but yeah that's pretty much it my second finished object my leopard print crochet clutch it's got an umbrella in there because after about eight weeks of continuous sunshine and sort of like high 20 degree C 30 degree C heat which is so unusual for Britain even though it is our summer it's very unusual. Um, today it has rained, which is kind of awesome, loving it, but it does mean it's actually really grey in here, and hence I needed the umbrella last night when we went out because there were storm clouds aplenty, and we didn't actually get wet, but today has been pretty stormy. The sky at one point today, I hope other people understand what I mean by this, was the most amazing grey. You know when it's sort of a dark grey but like almost as if it's like backlit and it's just that depth of flat storm cloud and you can sort of feel what's coming and see what's coming, a storm is coming. <laughs> but yeah, that amazing grey, I almost wanted to take a photo of it to capture it but I already take a ridiculous amount of photos of crochet, my children and just things that happen to me on a daily basis and they just sit on my phone. I think I have something like 12,000 images on my phone, on my phone. That's my second finished object. Um, next up, I have two cushions. And if you did watch um, last month's podcast, you will have heard me talking about these um, because I had them at cushion panel stage and actually this one especially I actually I first made 
a long time ago, possibly even last year, the start of this year, end of last year. Um, and it had just been sat as a panel in one of my whips bags and I had been saying how I've been feeling motivated to finish up some older projects. Um, and so I finished up these two and gave them backs. I, in the end, sewed their backs on. Um, I was telling you all how I find crocheting back and forth in rows really boring and not very good attention span wise at crocheting the backs of cushions and so I just thought I'm just gonna sew them and so I just did um, an envelope back two pieces of overlapping material the same width as the crochet panel um, right sides together on my sewing machine and sewed all the way around the edge um, this actually had a natural hem from the fabric I was using and I think I hemmed the other end actually no this was a sheet so there's a tip if your sewing skills are not what you want them to be or you don't feel up to doing a cushion if you want to minimize the amount of sewing on an envelope back like this um, cut up an old sheet or something that's already hemmed down the side and then the only sewing you need to do is the big square um, but also the more handmade cushions I make I think the better they are for having fabric backs because there's a lot less stretch um, in like a cotton or whatever this is than in the crochet panel itself I've got another one which I can see that I'm looking at over here where I did crochet the back and I think just where there's more stretch to it doesn't feel as um, like upholstered if that makes sense it, it just sort of slides around a bit more on the pad so where well, these have got sewn backs I think it is to their benefit um, and to mine because I didn't have to crochet them <laughs> So I posted a picture of these two cushions and all my other uh, handmade cushions. I've got like one knit, another crochet, two that are just sewn, one that's patchwork on my Instagram this week. And it was my most popular post ever that I've ever posted. I think it had something ridiculous for me, like 1,300 likes. Is that right? Yeah. Not that that matters, but I was really pleased because I was really happy with them and I think they look really good um, as a set, so yay for finishing up old whips also. So that's my two cushions. So these next two are both quite large finished objects, so I'll try my best to show you them in the screen. Um, to be fair, only one is one I've actually made since I last spoke to you all. The other one I had made prior to this but it was a magazine commission for Molly Makes so the pattern hadn't been shared when I last podcast if that makes sense. Um, and that one is a crochet rug which I made for, I'm gonna get this wrong now which is embarrassing because it's not like I work for the magazine, issue 93. I'm gonna go with that and if it's wrong, future me will correct myself in the bottom. Um, so this is very hard to show you, but this, believe it or not, is crochet. It is a crochet rope rug. Um, so I don't know how well you can see. Um, but the central section is rope. And then I've used what's well, basically, ba well it is baker's twine, but you could probably use a really strong full play cotton. Um, to crochet it into circles. So this central section is the same. This pink bit is just a softer rope and then it turns into the sort of more sturdy, hempy rope. Um, and then these outside circles are attached on the back. So these are all made separately. Um, and so yeah, it's a little kind of rug for maybe a child's room or a side table. <laughs> it's really hard to show you and it was basically supposed to be a project highlighting natural materials using a slightly different technique um, and also just create a kind of modern homewares piece that was the idea behind the brief 
um, and it was to show, yeah, that you can crochet materials like this. Um, there are lots of these types of rug around at the moment, not necessarily with a pink centre, that was the kind of Molly Makes magazine twist that we put on it, but lots of rugs in these completely natural materials. And yeah, so I really enjoyed making this. If you have watched before, you will know I really enjoy using slightly unusual materials or experimenting with crochet and seeing what different results I can get. And so this was right up my street and was part of the reason why I requested it as a project. Um, and yeah, not as hard on the hands, I would say, as you might think, because you're not actually crocheting with this thick rope. You're crocheting with the thinner thread that goes around it, the thinner twine or um, cotton, whatever you end up using. And so I used a four millimeter hook to make this. And yeah, if you are interested in the pattern, it will, I will put the link below. You can buy back issues of the magazine um, or you can buy digital issues through the, there's an app, I believe, um, you can buy it through there. And I think six months after it's published, I can release the pattern myself. So that's probably still five months away. But keep your eyes peeled because I probably will release it myself as a pattern or you can check out the Molly, X, Molly Makes Back issue if you're interested in making the rug. Okay, so from one large thing, I feel like I am just really rushing through, but I have so much to show you. I have so many, so many gorgeous new yarns and my book giveaway. The last, I think it's the last. Yeah, my last finished object to show you is a wall hanging. And it is this tassel number. Um, this is a granny square. And it's made using um, Burn It Maker Big, which, I don't know if this is gonna focus. Okay. So this uses Burn It Maker Big, which is this really big, super chunky yarn that you can see. Um, its ends are actually, it's almost like stuffed. <laughs> Get out of the way so that it'll focus. Um, the yarn has um, like a filling inside almost. See how well I can show you. Um, this is the filling. Which means that the yarn itself is really squishy and yeah, as I said, it's super chunky and it's variegated. Um, and this was a pattern, which is a free pattern on my blog. It is basically a six round granny square attached to a nice big old stick with tassels on the end. But I do give all the measurements for how much yarn you need and how long the tassels need to be cut and everything else on my blog post. Um, and this was a pattern for Knitcraft um, this month, which is July. They are having um, a granny square month. So every day they are releasing a new granny square pattern and this was my contribution. Um, I just, the idea behind it, I wanted to make something that didn't immediately look like a granny square in hindsight, I feel like I should have used a solid yarn of the Burnet Maker Big. I think this is the Blue Skies Vague colourway. Um, I feel like if I had done a solid, maybe a solid colour, not a variegated, it would have looked more like a granny. I don't know if that would be better or for worse. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to show it to you. Um, it's also making my arm ache because I'm very unfit and even just holding this up is hurting my arm. Um, that's my other finished project. It's a big granny square wall hang and it can be found either on my blog or on the Hobbycraft blog. Am I in focus now? I feel like I've now gone out of focus. I think we're good. So, that is pretty much all the finished objects I can show you. I have also done um, a scarf and a hat pattern, which I sent off to Hobbycraft. And I've done um, a stool project, which I've sent off to Molly Makes, but I can't show you either of those because they are secret Peter commissions. So they will be coming up on future podcasts. 
um it's christmas basically christmas is happening even though it's july because the, we just have to work that far ahead both with our magazine and other people especially if you are creating patterns for crafters because the crafters need the patterns a certain amount of time before christmas and so you have to make them even farther ahead um in order to get them photographed and written up and out in time for the other crafters so my world at the moment is full of christmas projects <laughs> Which is bizarre because, like I said, we've been having had such hot weather um, this summer in the UK. I'm going to move on to talk about works in progress. And hmm, the first one I want to show you, I'm going to put some blame on this guy for why I haven't podcasted in a little while. Because I started making this in January and the last couple of podcasts I've said, I'm nearly finished, I'm nearly finished, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> And I almost started to feel a little bit like I couldn't podcast again until I'd actually finished it. And then I just decided that was really silly because if you are a returning viewer, you will know I don't make things particularly quickly or longer projects take me longer. And so it doesn't really matter that I haven't finished it yet. Um, so I am talking about my crochet between the lines shawl. Uh, here's where I started. Um, it uses two cakes of um, Chipier's Whirl um, and they are both gradient yarns so it starts out dark and almost to look at it you can't even like the colour changes are quite subtle as it, as it happens and as it runs through the yarn it's getting quite exciting um, but when you see the two ends against each other it's really obvious, really obvious. <laughs> so yeah, this is how big it's getting. Um, I think I said last time I shared it, like, oh, look how big it is. And the designer, um, Canadach, her Instagram handle is, actually contacted me and said that it made her laugh because when she blocked hers, it grew by 20%. So, um, I don't know if that's going to happen with mine. I feel like it probably will grow a little bit when I block it. But, um, as you can see, it's already longer than, well, let's say longer than my winning span with my arm up against the wall. Um, it's probably pretty much my wingspan at the moment. Obviously, it does start out super narrow. You basically add on one stitch every two rows. And... I learned recently that each sheep yace well has um, over a kilometer of yarn on it. So this shawl is two kilometers of yarn, or it will be when it's finished. Um, and I always try and show this when I talk about it on the podcast, but it's got this really cool like optical effect when it's draping. It looks a certain way, sort of flat on, and then as you look at it, yeah, and then as you look at it down the length of the yarn, it changes. So, um, I am up to, how many repeats have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've just done the 13th repeat, and I need 14 repeats. So, I don't know how many more rows that is, I guess it's... 14, tw is it 28 more rows? That sounds like so much more, but two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight. So from here to here, that's tw that's 28 rows, would you believe, from where my two fingers are to my two fingers. So that's how much more I've got to go until the end. But as you can see, these rows are pretty long. Right now, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook and this yarn is four ply. And these are um, double crochet stitches or single crochet stitches if you work in US terms. So you can see why it's taking me a while. And there were a few evenings where I was like, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna smash through this, I'm gonna finish it. And it's just not possible to approach this project like that because 
there are so many stitches look how much I've done I feel like I don't feel like I feel very proud of the amount of stitches I have done I watch a lot of knitting podcasts bizarrely because I don't really knit I like 98% crochet but I enjoy watching them there aren't as many crochet podcasts that I have found that I like so I tend to watch knitting projects and I feel like they just whip up projects like of this size in no time at all and I have been making this since January this was actually a there's a crochet version and there's a knit version and so it was a make along because you crochet or you could knit um, and that started in January I don't know when it finished because it's now July nearly August here and hello I'm still going on the plus side it will probably be finished in time for autumn and so it is making me slightly warm even just having this like this it will be finished for autumn and then I can actually wear it in autumn um, and I think that also this is just not the kind of project that you rush to finish um, some people describe it as process versus project and there's something I really want this project as a project to wear but there's something about the process that is also just really therapeutic and enjoyable and so I think that's what I need to focus on and remember when I'm working on it. Um, I'll show you what's left of the yarn cakes. It feels like there's still quite a lot left um, but compared to look this is what this is what happens when you carry a project around from January to July and this this has been to um, Portugal, it has been to Iceland <laughs> and it's been all around the UK in my car uh, it's getting quite big now. I went to London recently on the train and for me to get to London on the train it's about an hour and 42 hours. So I can sometimes get quite a nice bit of crochet time in, especially if it's like um, a trip without children. But I felt like I couldn't even take it because although the weight is the same as when I started the project, thinking about it, it's quite bulky now. Um, to carry around with the, these as well so as I said I've got another couple of inches to add on and um, at the moment I'm the blue is going darker and the purple is getting lighter it's quite hard to see because I'm wearing it and so this purple is going to continue getting lighter and this blue is going to get, to get darker I'd really quite like to hit this dark blue here but I'm not sure if that will happen. And when I first started making it, I was like, I'm not gonna stop at the 14th repeat. I'm gonna continue until I use all of my yarn cakes. I'm not sure if that is still my plan. Um, and I apologize if the light has gone weird. It's getting increasingly darker here. And I feel like maybe I've whited the color out a bit by trying to compensate. Um, so yeah, apologies. It's also gone a little bit sort of like golden hour and a bit yellowy and grey. So the light is very strange. If it looks strange on camera, it's because it's strange here too. So there it is, my crochet between the lines shawl, which is um, an ongoing whip as ever. It keeps getting sidetracked for all my loop stitch and um, leopard print projects, which capture my imagination uh the second work in progress i have to show you is da, 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 this bobbly number which um and how where you can see is actually cream and white bobbles alternated um this is going to be a jumper for my little girl she is four and it's actually um a test crochet that i am doing um, for Little Golden Nook, um, and yeah, a children's, I think she call, is calling it, oh, Little, Little Heart Bobbles, that's terrible, that's definitely not what she's calling it, it's super cute, um, she, I'm testing the size 6 for her, you think is what I'm testing, my little girl is in 5 to 6 clothing in the UK, so she said 
that the size 6 in Australian terms would be the correct size to do. So that's what I'm doing and testing that. Um, I've got a little bit further to go and then I'm going to do the neckline. Then I think the back is, this is the back, the front is worked basically in the same way. And then I've got to add sleeves on. The sleeves I don't think have bobbles. I think they're just plain. Um, I am using two balls of um, Hobbycraft. Just realised I've just picked up two cream balls, which is definitely not right. Now I'm not sure where this one's come from. Don't think that's part of my project. This is the um, Hobbycraft Baby Soft DK, and that's what I'm using for the white and the cream. And this pink yarn I bought last um, summer when I was in Scotland, if you've been watching that long you may remember it it's like a really gorgeous i don't feel like the color is showing up right on the camera it's a little bit darker than it's showing up here quite like um a, a sh it, it's called like highland or shetland or something and it's just ever so softly variegated um kind of i wouldn't say tweed but it's yeah it's just got a very soft um, kind of colour change to it and it's a really nice like I want to say heathery colour which isn't right because that would be purple wouldn't it but um, it's really lovely and I'm really enjoying working with it for this I will put in the description box what it's called I feel like it's a James C. Brett yarn um, but that might not be correct so I'll let you know um, and yeah, I'll let you know how the jumper goes. Hopefully it will work up quite quickly. I already want now want to make one for my little boy and one for me. <laughs> Maybe that is a goal by Christmas. We can be like matching jumper crew. Maybe. Knowing me, I'll probably just get distracted and move on to something else. And then last but not least, I want to show you something which I've been working on. Um in the last week or so I actually made this it's probably gonna look really crazy when I show it to you I made this in two evenings because I was just obsessed with it um it is another foray into loop stitch fluffy texture crochet and this is a cushion panel but I have not yet made it into a cushion what I really love about this is partly that it's cut loop stitch, which is like my current obsession. Um, partly all the different yarns and colours. Um, so for instance, this oatmeal yarn and this um, lilac yarn I got when I was in Iceland. Um, this like black and white mild yarn is actually a yarn I bought from one of my mum's friends. And her and her sort of um, knit group. I think she's a she's a spinner. And what they did was they had a project where they had to make yarn like right from sheep to skein. I guess you would say. And so they they sheared the sheep, and then they did whatever you do to wool after that, like carded it and whatever it, um, and then spun it. And then she was selling it off. I mean, to touch it, it's like the wooliest of wools. It's it's pretty scratchy, pretty hard on the hands. I mean, these these Icelandic ones are wooly as well, but they're like you can almost see from the kind of texture and how it's standing up. You would not you would not want this as a jumper, but color wise i just i love the black and white or the sort of near gray and near white and i think this is the nat like natural maybe it was too sheep i feel like this is undyed i um like natural colors but um i had a couple of different mini skeins that i bought off her she was just selling them off really cheap at a um a craft fair a good wheel evening I think it might have been that I went to yeah I just love those and then everything else is just a bit of a mix this is a new knit craft yarn called get your fluff on and it's I don't even know how well you can see because of the color and the lighting just know that it is what it says it's super fluffy this mustard is the mustard I used for the cowl I made last winter um, this is a leader of the pack pink. 
this is some super fluffy film noir fluffiness it's like wild if yarns are wild then this is a wild yarn it's really soft but it's like crazy textured um and then this is the same yarn that i just used on a commission project that i had a bit left over of and this one is a mohair that is super super fluffy so this is the back you can see maybe the shape divisions a bit better in theory these are all aran weight yarns although as you can see um this get your fluff on is two dk's held double which i think has kind of thrown the square out of whack slightly it's not a perfect whack these are it's not a perfect whack it's not a perfect square these are all slightly different weights and completely different fibers and textures and that is like what I absolutely love about it it's obviously a really abstract design it was supposed to be 40 centimeters but it's more like 50 centimeters but I do have a cushion pad that this is going to go on and I'm really excited to do a few more of these I imagine this is probably going to be a bit of a marmite project that not everybody would like but I I love that it's yarns from all different places um and different textures and fibers and that it's fluffy so as I said, I did it in loop stitch and then I cut all the loop stitches, a bit like when I made Old Harry, who I showed last time. Um, and one thing that I've just discovered recently, yarns like this are super fluffy. This is like a mohair something. I can't remember what the mix is. Um, this one was not so fluffy, but if you backcomb it with like a wire bristle hairbrush, yes it makes it even more fluffy um so i feel i found my calling just textured fluffy cushions my mum said this grossed her out slightly less maybe it grosses you out i don't know i love it so there are more of these happening in my future and i i may write the pattern up if people are interested but you may be sensing a theme that i have quite a few patterns i've said i'll write up and they haven't happened yet so this will have to get in in the long queue if it's going to happen and that's pretty much it for works in progresses i have got other ones on the go obviously and i am in between being distracted by new projects on a bit of a finishing off projects spree so there is going to be more finishing off projects in my near future I'm going to move on now to new things. I have quite a lot of new yarn and then after that I'm going to do my giveaway. So, bearing in mind that I haven't podcast um, for two months, I do have a fair bit of yarn um, that I have bought in that time. Here are some. <laughs> Just a few skeins of beautiful yarn. Um, when I went to Portugal, I picked up these mint beauties. I really like buying what I call souvenir yarn. And so I got myself over to a, um, am I, I just feel like I'm not in focus, but I probably am. I sought out, thanks to the wonderful internet, a, a local yarn store to where we were staying. Um, we were in Lagos. Um, near Lagos in Portugal um, and yeah I picked up these and I was kind of I was trying to be good I think and I felt like I didn't need any yarn as you know I have lots of yarn but I also like buying souvenir yarn and I went into this shop and it was really sweet but there weren't many like indie dye yarns or whatever there was a real mix and a lot of them were yarns which I knew I could get in the UK and so I wanted to try and get something that I could only get in Portugal and they had she had this big box of um these sort of cotton yarns I don't know how well you can see the texture um it's like a really interesting I want to say like bou boucle is that even the, the word texture um, and these were sold by weight, so I think for these two skeins, I only paid 
four pounds, four of your English pounds, which I thought for, I think it's about 250 grams, four pounds. I should have got more. I've no idea what it is other than the fact that she told me it was cotton. I didn't speak any Portuguese, she didn't speak much English, so we got the fact that it was cotton, which you can kind of tell. I don't know if it's like a cotton blend, just a, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it's like hand spun or it has no label, that's all we know about it. It's very fine, um, I'm guessing lace weight, if not finer, but I have no issue with, um, using yarns double or even triple so I think that was what I would probably do I'll hold or I'll hold these with another yarn I will find some use for them because the colour which you probably can't tell accurately is just beautiful it's like a mint mint sort of sorbet colour uh when I got back from Portugal at the start of June, I also went to um, the next Cassie Allsop's Handmade Fair, which took place at Bowood House, which is sort of um, near Bath in the UK. And I picked up a skein of, can you see? Um, Spectrum Fiber Origami. I love this yarn. Look how pretty it is. Uh, this is just me all over. Like, It's got a cream or sort of undyed base and then speckles of all these really beautiful colours. Some are more neon than others. And I bought two of these because apparently my money was burning a hole in my pocket. Um, I did, in the intervening period, I don't know if I brought it down, buried under a load of stuff start making a shawl. I'm sat on it. Here it is. Um, start making a shawl. I started making this skimming stones cowl. Um, so this is the other spectrum fibre that I balled up. Um, I bought this from Louisa of the Fibre Lounge um, her stall that she had at Castile Tops Handmade Fair. Um, I really love Louisa and I will, partly I'm just happy to spend all my money at her shop because uh, it's nice to support like local yarn shops that you know the runners of and also spectrum fiber because I have never had any spectrum fiber yarn and I love her colorways so I bought up this one and the skimming stones cow is a mystery cow I think all the clues are out now um, but you needed one main yarn and then four mini skeins and there were six clues and they released them um, like once a week over the six weeks. So I saw people making them um, after the first one and loved it. Um, picked out these yarns from my stash. They're a mix, mainly these three of Vicky Brown yarns. And this one is one that I got from a, um, what's it called when you do that fibre swap thing? Fibre share swap and I loved these together and I was so excited and I was being really naughty because I had loads of other projects on the go that I should have been doing but I just couldn't I just had to start making this shawl because I was loving everybody else's but then when I started making it up just wasn't feeling it and I had a little bit of a chat with myself because just the way that I think this green and red was striping up just felt too Christmassy. And then where this pink mini was being used, um, I, because it's variegated, it's the other colour that it's variegated with was just too similar to the Spectrum Fibres yarn. And so the stripes weren't, it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. And I also thought, I do know what I'm like and maybe I should just wait and see what this mystery shawl looks like when it's finished and then I will know if I want to make it or not. Um, and it, they have had all the clues out now and as lovely as it is, I just don't, I'm not feeling it now with these yarns. And the pattern is nice but I feel like I probably have other patterns in my library. I mean I've bought it now but I have other patterns in my library which or I can make up a pattern for a shawl that I just 
I'm really digging. I feel that that if I'm going to spend time on a shawl, especially with my other shawl that I've got has taken me since January, I need to be loving it. So love the Spectrum Fibre Yarn that I bought from the Kirsty Allsop Handmade Fair via the Fibre Lounge, but this one is not going to become a project that's going to be hot. And then I had also, in June, received in the post these beauties. I mean, I didn't just receive them, I obviously purchased them and then received them. Um, but I did it, I think, at the end of May, and then I kind of forgot about them. Um, they came all the way from the Netherlands, and they have been um, naturally dyed by Carmen of New Leaf Design. And I bought three. These are DK weight and they are all wool. 100% non-superwash wool. They're all around 100 grams. Part of the reason that I treated myself to three skeins is because, oh my goodness, look at them. But also because I watch Carmen's podcast and I watched her experiment with natural dyeing and then I watched um, in fascination as she dyed up the yarns and was talking about all the different um, materials she was using and then when she put some up for sale in her Etsy shop it was just a bit of a like I didn't really have a choice I had to buy them and I'm so so glad I did because I really hope these colours are showing up um, well in the light they are just really 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 pretty um, this pinky one is called Peach Perfect and it's dyed with Madder Root. Uh, this lilac one is called What's for Dessert and it's dyed with Cochineal. And then this um, kind of mustard golden one is called Golden Hour, dyed with Avocado and Anato Seed. So yeah, really happy with those. And quite a haul of yarn, if we're being honest. So pretty much bringing me up towards the end. I do have some other really gorgeous knit craft yarns that I have been sent, um, one of which was the Get Your Fluff On, which I just showed you the white of in that um, parcel. They are so fluffy and so nice, and these are what I made the secret hat and scarf project out of, so I'll look forward to showing you photos of those when they are out. Um, this is DK weight acrylic polyamide with some merino and some alpaca in there and it's called get your fluff on. So if you are in the market for any uh, super lovely, super fluffy yarns, then this is the grey um, in the colourway, um, this is the blue, there's a white and also um, a pale pink they have here. Um, yeah. And I am genuinely recommending those. I do get sent yarns by Knit Craft to review. Um, and some I love more than others. These ones I genuinely love. And there's going to be lots more fluffy cushion action happening with this range. Um, you may hear rustling. That is because all my yarn is now, thanks to a moth scare, not on my lovely yarn shelf, but stored in plastic bags. Um, these bags, thankfully I had a ton of from when I did the um, Little Hearts for Grace charity project and I bagged up all the squares for the Big Granny Square Blankets into rows and kept them because I just felt like I could throw out a ton of plastic bags and good job I didn't because now all my yarn is stored in them. Uh, in case you missed the drama on Instagram, I was basically sorting out my yarn shelf and a moth flew out. And then it kind of occurred to me in a way when you think, I just should have known that, that moths eat yarn. And I had a lot of merino and alpaca and cashmere and silk. Actually, I don't think I've got any cashmere yarn, but splends of stuff just on a shelf. I found one live moth and one dead moth, but apparently their life cycle is so short that even just finding one moth. I froze all my yarn. I had a big sort out in my craft room. I have reorganized my storage. Stuff is now bagged. Um, 
and yeah it's kind of good i did need to have a sort out and it's prompted me to sort of throw some stuff away and um organize my yarn and i get quite inspired by just looking at yarn and seeing it in combinations and sometimes you i'd like chuck a, some yarns in a bag and i'm like ooh, they go nicely together it is sad that i can't have it on my shelf but the more I think about it, the more I probably should have known not to do that. So if you've got natural yarn out and about, um, you may want to consider putting them under Ziploc lockdown too because apparently moth infestations are not to be trifled with. I feel like I was maybe really overcautious. I have not seen any evidence of moths eating anything else, any carpets or clothes or toys or whatever fingers crossed but maybe maybe it would have gone that way if I hadn't frozen everything and reorganized so a cautionary tale maybe slightly boring to talk about moths I hope if you're still watching you probably don't mind the moth chat because you put up with all the other chat so last but not least I have um, three copies of this sensational book are Mandy by Procher by Redagate, Red Agape, Red Agape. She told me when I did my live with her, and I still can't pronounce it right, so sorry Mandy, on the off chance you're watching. Um, yes, I have three copies of her new book to give away. The new book is also her first book. Um, how can I show you the wonders that are in this book? I mean, if you are familiar with her work, you will just know how wondrous she is. Um, this is her dream of a craft room. Uh, and yeah, I'm giving away two copies on my Instagram, um, which has already been opened. And all you basically have to do if you want to enter that one is to like it and tag a friend and be following me on Instagram. So if you want to go and enter that over there as well, you can. And then I'm going to give away one copy here on my podcast. But you guys also have the added bonus of having a bundle of yarn um, sent to you as well. So my lovely team at Knitcraft have kindly offered 10 balls of the In The Zone yarn. I should have brought some as an example, but know that it's really gorgeous. The colours are really similar to the colour palette Mandy uses. And they're in Aaron Worsted weight as well, which a lot of the projects in Mandy's book uh, use as well. Look at this bunting, it's so pretty. So, if you would like to win one copy of this book and 10 balls of In The Zone 100 gram yarn from Knitcraft, all you need to do is be a subscriber to my channel um, and to leave me a comment below about the book um, to say that you'd like to be entered. Maybe you've seen Mandy's work before, maybe you haven't, maybe you um, have been looking for a book just like this, full of colourful, beautiful projects and you just would like to make... Just leave me a comment and let me know that you'd like to be entered. And I will enter you. I will draw um, the winner for this in a week's time. So on Saturday the 4th of August. The giveaway for my um, the Instagram one closes on Friday the 3rd of August. So pretty much the same amount of time. They'll both be open for just under a week. Um, and we'll get it all posted out to you. So to clarify two copies being given away over on Instagram and you just get a copy of the book and then the giveaway here is for one copy of the book and a bundle of 10 balls of yarn which will all go to one person which is pretty exciting in my opinion <laughs> so leave me a comment below and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and if you feel like giving me a thumbs up generally, if you've enjoyed the podcast and that would also be awesome I really enjoy reading your comments and Comments and thumbs up and things just really helps get the podcast out there to a wider audience. So it's always appreciated if you want to leave me a thumbs up or a comment generally. Obviously you have to do it to win the book in the instance of letting me know that you want to win the book. 
<sighs> I feel that that has been a swift, not so swift hour, roller coaster of me talking very fast to the camera. If this is your first time watching, please do check out some of my older and maybe less um, full podcasts because this has been jam packed full of yarny goodness. I hope you have enjoyed um, some of the projects I've talked about and shared today and have enjoyed seeing the yarn and new things that I have been getting. Apologies if the lighting is weird. Um, I'm hoping my new camera is going to save my ass, but it is quite grey outside and quite dark in this evening now. So, we're going to get back on track, hopefully with our fortnightly, two-weekly filming of the podcast. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And yeah, I hope you have enjoyed the podcast. <laughs> This always happens. I talk for too long. Too much talking. Uh, I'll see you all in two weeks' time and I will um, get in contact with the winner in one week's time for the giveaway. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.